Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with my movie reaction to Fate Grand Order Camelot uh, movie number two. Uh, this is the second part of uh, the Camelot movie and I've already reacted to the first part before. If you're new to this channel, uh, I'll be linking it down in the description box. If you want to check it out, you can go click on it and uh, yeah so if uh, the, for people who are like you know new to my channel or watching this for the first time um like i am an fgo player i've already played the like you know these part i've already completed it and uh, you know like that's why i know what's going to happen kind of uh, but this is my first time actually watching the movie in itself so i know what's going to happen i know the story but i don't know how like i'm, I'm actually excited to see how they animate the fights and stuff uh, part one was okay it was nothing as it was not as good as babylonia in my opinion but i, I feel like they also kind of i think uh, people said that yeah they, they cut stuff out as well so but still it was impressive you know and um i have to say i loved first part uh, part camelot in itself is such a great st uh, story and you know like seeing arsha stella being animated is such a joy <laughs> in part one and uh, yeah i'm looking forward to like you know this uh, this movie uh, i won't like you know i won't spoil stuff i'm but i have a few things that i'm actually looking forward to w watch uh, you know in in this movie the things that will happen i'll not spoil it here for people who are watching this for the first time or something i won't spoil it for for them i'll i'll try to keep like you know like uh, quiet about all of these things while even while reacting to it i probably won't spoil i'll i'll try not to spoil so <laughs> yeah i'll talk about everything after the movie ends so yeah let's get started then and uh, like you know as i said it's been a while i've actually played camelot i, I might have forgotten a few stuff here and there so it'll also be kind of like a little like you know few portions will be a new experience for me as well so anyways um yeah let's get started and uh, as this is like a movie reaction it'll always be timered uh, it is obviously be it'll always obviously be timered and the subtitles will be given uh, so that you can sync uh, your video to my reaction and play it alongside so yeah anyways let's get started i'll be putting the, the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go All right, let's see. Okay, what is this? Oh, this is, um, yeah, a bit of here. There you go. Wow. Oh my god, this scene. The famous scene of Arthur telling Bedivere to throw the uh Excalibur into the la lake, Lady of the Lake. Oh boy. Okay. Wow. Well, wow. This is this is a very famous scene. Like, not only in Fate, but also. Um, like you know, in the actual lore where Arthur orders Bedivere to throw the. Excalibur away, but he does. He he's unable to do it the first two or three times, I think. Oh my God! Here we go. Gramps is here. <laughs> oh. Wow! Look at him.
chain for all returns. Duty. Okay. Oh, Ritz guy's here, I think. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um Oh boy. Well. Yeah, this this thing also oh boy. This Arash's yeah. Arsh's last moments. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Okay, they're they're focusing on this because obviously I, I I won't spoil it here. Like I actually want to talk about this, but I won't. There you go. Oh boy. This is where Marsh gets such a... Oh my god. Wow, I was... That was yeah, I was also surprised. I like you were an observer. Marsh is not an observer. Yeah. Oh, well, is he good? I forgot how she actually realizes who it is. No, I played it in the game, but I don't remember. Oh my god, here we go. <laughs> my, okay. Whoa! Oh my god, what the? <laughs> ah, this is nothing. Oh boy, Agravain. Oh boy. Ah. Arthur. Toward the end. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh... Wait, did Lancelot ever say th Hmm. Uh, yep. Well, it's kind of <laughs> more to Hmm. Like, it's interesting that Bedivere was the one who was the most loyal to Arthur, but in this singularity, he's the one who's actually betraying her in a, in a way, but... What? Oh boy. I've actually forgotten a few parts, like, this, this part caught me by surprise, I, I did not remember this. Oh boy, here, here he is. You're in front of Osmandis. Like, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. Oh boy. Oh. 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 Ah. Uh, awkward. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Well, I left myself. Then, oh, okay. My God. Oh. Oh, yep, whacked. <laughs> oh my god. Yo. Just
Ah. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Especially against him, you know? <laughs> My god, I never knew you could use a shield like that. Whoa! Okay, the animation has improved by a lot. There you go. Galahad. Yep. Wait, so I think Bedivia told her, didn't he? And that's why she was a, a bit more pissed than usual. Oh. Wow. Okay, this fight is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Managed to win the grail with success. <laughs> well, there you go, he lost. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Why not help us? You might be able to see them. That's <laughs> a family problem. Nah, he won't do that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, come on. And he's going to laugh and all. <laughs> <laughs> you impress me, boy. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay, come on. Wow. I trust him. Pseudo spirit on calculation. Okay. Wow. End of the world. Hmm. Tower at the end of the... Oh, okay. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I forgot about this part. All right, I mean, it makes sense. Okay, yeah, there you go. Wow. My God, like. And just preserve them. Well, hmm. Well, oh, Lancelot is tall. <laughs> oh, no, he's he's riding a horse. Okay, <laughs> okay. All right, we're back. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um <laughs> Okay.
Hmm. Oh, Vin okay, there you go. Thank God. Well, everyone knew. <laughs> well. <laughs> Yeah, he, he helped her out. <laughs> Typical Lancelot. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> yeah. No. Yeah. <sighs> He... My God. Oh, no. Ten thousand. <sighs> okay. Wow, it's a lot of them. <laughs> Fujimaru. Oh, certainty. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, there you go. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you should not underestimate them. Oh my god. Hmm. 
Hmm. But sanity is yeah perfect for that. <laughs> Drinking it. Holy grail. committed a sin hmm yeah Yeah, I think three times he goes and comes back, unable to do it. Yeah, there you go. Two times. Third time, yeah. Yeah, the, the revelation will come in the end, like what's happening to him. Oh, this, this kid, I forgot his name, Rust. Oh. <laughs> My God, that's oh. Right of the end of journey. Yeah. Hmm. Ending without sense. Oh, they're trying to find flats. Okay. Wow. Yeah, this is like a deserted place. Hmm. Wow. 
Wow. Bedivere. This is perfectly like you know something that Bedivere would be able to like you know this is what he's been conflicted about. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. To, yeah, to give meaning to others' lives, we keep living. Yeah, to give meaning to Arash's sacrifice or his life. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. yeah it would have been easy if it was for him he could have easily given it up but since it's for someone else he could not do it yeah Mm. Okay. Well, we are here. Wow. <clears throat> oh my god, the sun is up in the sky. Ah, uh, well, time to bring out Uriel. You know, <laughs> because one of the biggest battles. Hmm. Up oh, there you go. One of the most. <laughs> most difficult battles in FGO for new players okay Oh boy. <clears throat> yeah. Oh no. Ah. Okay, Betty is here. Wow. Whoa, what's happening? Ah! There he is. Wow. It's dark. Well, oh. 
<laughs> yeah. My God. <laughs> oh. My God. Wait, who was that? Oh, it's Lancelot. Sansang is... Oh. Yeah, but this is the time. Wait, who is this? Oh, Nita Chris. Yeah, we have... What is that? Some C4? <laughs> Explosives? <laughs> I don't remember this part. I've forgotten this part in the game. Oh, okay. It's his normal phantasm. Um, I mean... <laughs> Wow, oh my god, look at that. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep it at that. Hmm. Exactly, that's what I, you know. <laughs> oh boy. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, it's a grail. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, but not this time. Oh. Oh, wait. Who? My God. Oh, okay. Wow. Ah, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, he's she's okay. <laughs> yeah.
Right, so Mordred is left, Tristan, Agravain, and obviously Arthur and Dragon. Oh, this is a little recollection, I think. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's uh Garrett, isn't it? It's Garrett, isn't it? Oh yeah, I think that's Garrett. My God. Oh, my God. Whoa. Oh, Tristan. It's Tristan. Uh. <sighs> yeah, let him handle this. Hmm. All right, here we go. Hassan is here. And I'm guessing Serenity is also here. Whoa! There you go. Oh yeah, they... 
they oh, I remembered um they they didn't even show uh, uh 100 personas didn't they like they completely um the kind of the anime I'm talking about oh my god he opened his eyes like in the anime they completely like you know like cut off um Hassan of the 100 personas didn't they I don't know why they did that like Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Three more minutes. Okay, here we go. Long distance. What? <laughs> Yep. Ah. Yeah, the wrong minion. Yeah, everything's going. Oh my god, everything's just being erased completely. Only the city will remain. My god. Oh, well, you... and that's Gramps you're talking about. My God. <laughs> I don't, will that work? Oh, oh, Madrid is here. Okay. Wow. Oh, wait, who's this? Oh, Sansan.
<laughs> okay, thank you for that. <laughs> I don't know, blow everything up on the... Oh! Yeah, oh my god. Yeah. A huge place. Hmm. Oh, uh, this aggravate? <laughs> is this aggravate? No, it's oh, it's Gawain. Okay. Whoa! What the? My God! Oh! Lancelot is here. Oh my god, the chains. My god. Wow! Oh my god, this scene. Damn, this scene is... <laughs> oh! Poison gas? Ah. Oh. I don't think Oh no. Uh. Oh. Oh my god. Reversal. Oh, reversal. Oh my god. Oh. What the? Oh! My God!
Oh my god, two more left. Yeah, King Arthur is there. Oh god, yeah, you need to use them. Whoa, what the? Oh, oh. Ah! Oh my god. Oh. Whoa. Oh, there you go. Zamania. Oh my god. Nah, it's going to... Uh. Oh my god. Yeah. Whoa, what happened? Oh my god. <sighs> oh my god, yeah. Oh. oh my god This is reduce the weight of scene and save the heart.
Hmm. Oh, okay, here we go. Yo! <laughs> Wow, oh my god, the noble phantasms. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow, this is this is quite stylish. <laughs> there you go, his noble phantasm as well. Okay. Wow. Oh my god. Oh. Once again. My God, what is this? Oh my God. Wow, the music and this. What the? <gasps> oh. Oh.
Wow, everyone's using the normal phantasms. There you go. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Oh. My god, I have to say the uh, effects and the what can I say the animations and everything are quite impressive in this one I, I really like the style that they're doing it. I'll talk about it later on Oh, oh my god, okay Okay, Gawain is still left. Oh no, he's no old phantasm. Oh no. Okay. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, oh. oh my god, it didn't work. <sighs> the sun is still up, so ah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. 
Arthur's statue. Oh my god, the music! Wow! Oh. oh oh my Mm. Wow. My god. Oh, okay, so here we go, the Lion King. Oh!
God cannot exist without eternity. Well, here we go. Oh! Here we go. The first time. This is the first time. There you go. Oh my god. There you go. Here we go. Oh. It's Merlin. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Whoa, my God, look at that. Hmm. Here we go. My God. Hmm. Yeah, oh my god. Ah. Hmm. Yeah. The translation is pretty 
uh, the subtitles. Kind of weird at sometimes, but it's okay. Hmm. Oh. Third. Oh. The Mamoru Miyano's voice. Oh. Mamoru Miyano sang the song, didn't he? Yeah. Mm, the most loyal knight.
My god. As a normal human. Yeah. The subtitles are a little bit weird, weird at times, you know, but it's understandable. Nothing much to. Oh my god. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, my god, okay. I have to say, one thing I'm really glad about is the last scene was animated perfectly. Like, even if, like, you know, people say that, oh, the, they, like, you know, like, they cut stuff and they, like, you know, like, the, the animation was not as good as Babylonia, like, you know, even, even if the, that was the case, I'll have to say one thing I'll give props to them is they animated the ending scene beyond perfectly. That was beautiful. That was beautifully done. The last scene of Arthur and Bedivere. Like that in itself, I think gives like, you know, gives this a lot of positive points. And like, you know, I can probably like, you know, what can I say? Like the things that the few things that I really did not like is number one, they cut out a few stuff, I think. Uh, for example, Hassan of uh, 100 Personas is not here, isn't she? Like she was supposed to, she, like she's completely out of this movie. I don't know why. Like, yeah, even in part one uh, of Camelot's, like, you know, people in the comment section let me know that Hassan is not here at all. I'm talking about the 100 Personas. So these few things, like even if these were like the, maybe I don't know, like the shortcomings of the movie, but the final portion, I think it like it was done so beautifully that I can probably ignore all of that. Like that was amazing. The, the final scene. Wow. OK. And uh, with Mama Miano's voice, you know, like singing in the background. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Like I never thought I would actually hear Mama Miano sing, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> I'm really glad about that. Like Mamoru Miyano is, is the best, like at least for me in my list, the best male voice actor. I love him so much. And yeah, like him voicing Bedivere and also like, you know, singing. Oh, this is, this is amazing. And like, what can I say? Like the, the ending scene was very powerful and like, Arthur's only wish was to save Britain and that in itself I think became like you know like him her being unable to die twisted that ideal into such a thing and such a monstrosity and like that's why this happened you know like this is a singularity a thing that went on a different route than the original human history so like this is the like you know I guess what would have happened if Bedivere did not uh, like you know throw the uh, Excalibur into the lake uh, into the lake This would have happened and that's what we see like unlike you know when like in the normal history Bedivere throws uh, away the Excalibur in the third time and that's when you know Arthur like, you know, dies and She like you know she gets uh, Recorded into the throne of heroes and that's why after she comes back in the other Holy Grail Wars She has that uh, ideal of saving Britain she has that wish of, you know, uh, making the destruction of Britain go away. And this would have happened if she did not die. She, she in her own twisted way, would like to protect everyone. And, you know, 
Yeah. Wow. Is there anything else? Okay, my god, there's something left. Oh, Agravain. <coughs> Work to do. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> wow I think that was it yeah oh boy oof Is that the end yeah Okay, um, one thing I am not so sure about, I have actually read the lore of Agravain as well before, but I'm not, like, I don't remember much, but I feel like, um, as far as, now correct me if I'm wrong, as far as I know, uh, he was also someone who was, uh, I don't know, like who was, I don't know, manipulated by Morgan or something, like, you know, like he was also kind of like a, um someone who wanted to bring arthur down from his throne just like mordred was uh but he changed i think in in that process as he said after he kept watching arthur you know he, arthur became the ideal that he wished for and that's how i think he he changed in the end even though his uh, main goal was to actually bring arthur down he, he did not do that. He decided to become loyal to Arthur. I think that was his story, wasn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I might be wrong though, you know, I don't remember. Unlike Mordred, who actually rebelled against uh, Arthur, he did not do that. I think that was his story. I might be wrong though, you know, like if I'm wrong, let me know. So that's why, you know, like we can see how in the end, like when Bedivere and uh, our Agravain was, no, not Bedivere, sorry, when Lancelot and Agravain was fighting, you know, uh, Agravain was saying that, yeah, like, I was, like, you know, I, I manipulated the king, but on the way, I changed. Her ideals became something which I wish to strive for. And, you know, like, and I want to make, help king, our king make the perfect world. So, another sad story, my god. Oh. Okay, like this, like this movie, I have to say, like all the noble phantasms, the fighting scenes were very well done. Um, even though uh, the art and the animation was not like, like, you know, not on par with Babylonia, it was smooth as hell. It was very smooth. That's one thing I really enjoyed. Like, it, the animation was fluid. Like, they were fighting in such a fluid manner. Like, you know, like it, it did not feel, felt animated. It felt like someone really was doing that. You know, like, uh, like it was like a normal movement. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm able to properly, like, you know, explain it. But animations usually have, whenever we some see something animated, it usually have this kind of a little bit of a stiffness, especially in fighting scenes. You know, uh, even even if the animations are amazing, there is a little bit of stiffness, which few, like, you know, like in in a few, in a more simple animation style, it kind of goes away. For example, in this one. Like the animation style was very simple, but at the same time, it was very fluid. It, it looked so fluid, like, you know, the, the movement of the hands and the fighting scenes, it was very fluid, even though it was not that detailed. So that's one thing that I really enjoyed about this. So, yeah, and obviously the art, the animation, everything improved here, uh, comparing it to season, uh, movie one. And I'm glad about that. And I'm, as I said, I'm really glad about the fact that the ending was so amazingly done that was that was the best part the last um you know like the last 15 or 20 minutes was the best you know of of the whole movie not only this part but the previous part as well you know like arsha stella was amazing but at the same time i i feel like this the last scene of bedivere and king arthur was the most beautiful thing of camelot and they, they did it perfectly my god 
wow that was amazing okay um so here uh, we continue from the first movie and um <clears throat> the first uh, thing we get to see here is obviously lancelot <laughs> the whole thing with Lancelot and Marsh. Now, now I can spoil as much as I could. Like I really wanted to talk about it, but I was I didn't because I, I'm I, I'm sure a lot of people are probably watching this for the first time who has not played the game. So it would have been a big spoiler for them. So as we get to know, uh, Marsh's uh, heroic spirit that was all uh, like you know inside her that uh, decided to make a con make a contract with her was uh, Galahad, which is the son of sir lancelot and that's why you know lancelot from the beginning was a little hesitant in fighting marsh because he he felt something was wrong especially after seeing his shield uh seeing her shield that that, that is the round table the shield that marsh holds i think that's yeah that is the round table isn't it so like he that's why he felt bothered to actually fight her and was hesitating in the beginning but yeah, like Bedivere uh, actually told Marsh the previous night about what her actual identity is. And I, I remember that this being one of the most important scenes when I was when I played the game. And, you know, like this is like there was this build up of who is Marsh's, uh, you know, heroic spirit inside Marsh. Who is it? There was this huge build up. And then we get to know that it's actually Galahad. And uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> Another thing which was not something surprising for me because I played the game is that Da Vinci was alive. Uh, like, you know, like from uh, episode, uh, not episode, sorry, from part one of the movie, we saw Da Vinci, like, you know, like dying in a way. Like, we did not see her death, but it, it was implied that she died. But then she suddenly pops out here, which was another, like, you know, important part in the game as well. Um, so yeah and these things like you know these surprising portions another thing which was i really wanted to talk about but i did not in the beginning was you remember that scene where uh lancelot i think it was lancelot wasn't it yeah they were talking with marsh uh Ritzka. no it was uh sorry not lancelot uh, da vinci yeah da vinci lancelot marsh uh fujimaru you know all of them were talking inside the tent and um uh, bedivere was actually like you know kind of getting bothered by that and like you know, there's something happening to him he was being like, you know kind of a little bit suspicious at that moment <laughs> you know like it, it felt as if he's actually hiding something which even marsh and Riska kind of um realized like they, they said that yeah bedivere is actually probably uh, like not telling us the truth full truth which was actually this the last scene that it actually um like you know explains like imagine a human imagine a human actually living for a one one thousand five hundred years trying to uh, find uh, his king uh to like you know uh, to you know, to fulfill the order that she gave him and um yeah and and, and the excalibur was the only thing what was that was actually uh, anchoring Arthur in this world and it made her like this type of a monstrosity who remembered nothing of the previous like you know like instances and uh, Bidifair has been looking for her f for 1500 years and he, he was alive just because uh, like you know he had the Excalibur with him it was fused into his hand uh, which I think they explained like Merlin did that didn't he yeah I think so so <clears throat> that was and i think this was the part where merlin actually gets like a silhouette like at that part portion in the and, and this portion in the game merlin was still not introduced merlin was actually introduced in um babylonia so here we actually get like a little sneak peek of merlin and <laughs> you know as a silhouette that's why you know here they did not show merlin's face they were kind of giving us a silhouette because it's supposed to be something hidden like you know it's, it's supposed to be a spoiler for babylonia but it's kind of weird in a way because babylonia actually came before this in an anime unlike the game so that's why in babylonia we we see merlin in front of our face and uh, <laughs> and here in camelot he's in a silhouette so it's kind of weird in in that way but for the game it was pretty normal because camelot came before uh, babylonia and that's why merlin had a silhouette and then in babylonia he was introduced so 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure people who are watching this, you know, who have not played the game and, and are watching this, have already watched Babylonia. So they, they pretty much know who it was. That was Merlin. <clears throat> okay, and... Uh, Alright, so yeah. Uh, okay, the thing that I was saying. So uh, him look, looking, for, uh, like, you know, looking for his king for so many years and being alive because of the Excalibur, and fighting you know like being a human he fought like if you guys know like it's kind of impossible for a human to fight with servants unless and uh, until they are like you know very trained or very uh, like you know specialized you went to very specialized training or something like um kiritsugu or um kire or uh, sojiro you know these characters these characters are the exception i think who can probably fight part to par with the servant um, but even still if the servant actually unleashes the noble phantasm they still can't hold a candle to them but they can at least defend themselves because they have been trained and they're special you know there's they've been specialized uh, went to specialized training but a normal human being you know like even though he is a knight it's kind of impossible to fight against servants, but and he has been actually doing that for all all alone all this while and never actually telling anyone that he's a human and Merlin's um, magic was actually hiding it for them as well that he's a, he's a human, not a servant. This was the biggest spoiler of this uh, of Camelot and uh, when they were like you know showing that scene, <laughs> like I, I, I knew what was happening, but yeah, I did not want to actually give that away, so I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay another thing that i loved about this movie are the noble phantasms wow i have to say um i love the noble phantasms they like you know like these noble phantasms we kind of see in the game uh every day but seeing it actually animated like this was really amazing i was ex actually uh, I, I was very impressed with quite a lot of noble, not a quite a lot, but all of the noble phantasms. For example, Ozymandias' noble phantasm, Sansa's noble phantasm, which was one of the most amazing, like you know, noble phantasms that I've seen. And uh, Mordred as well. Uh, did Tristan unleash his noble phantasm? I don't remember. Um, anyways, um, uh, Gawain's noble phantasm. All these, these are no noble phantasms we were seeing, and it was it was fantastic. Oh, neutral creatures as well, kind of. And there's another thing hmm, that I I think I remember uh, the whole scene with Ozamandis and Nitocris here. Uh, Ozamandis, he like he said that he had actually seen a lot more. That's why which actually you know made him hesitate to go forward, which is something that is not at all like Ozamandis, you know. Which he himself kind of uh, <laughs> he himself kind of uh, says in the end. He says that it's not like me to actually stop and to actually back down because of some kind of vision that I've seen, you know, of the future. Like you know, I was not acting as myself because obviously this is Ozymandias we're talking about. He he's not that type of a person. He he's like Gilgamesh, <laughs> egotistical, brash, and loud, perfect to be a king, and. <laughs> So yeah, he he then then in the end he we also see him also using his noble phantasm and helping out Ritska in that process. Uh, giving he gave away the Grail to Ritska as well, and uh, then uh, Nitocris tries to stop that, you know, using her noble phantasm because but Ozymandias stops her and he she, he says something like yeah like you know you, like we still need you, so don't do this. Now, his one thing that I am not sure, again, like, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, <clears throat> as far as I know, uh, Nitocris is supposed to have come before Ozymandias, isn't she? And, but the reason why Nitocris uh, respects Ozymandias so much is because he, is, he was more uh, capable of a king as a pharaoh, I think. Like, he respects Ozymandias being a pharaoh that's why she she's always so like you know uh, like respectful towards Ozymandias even though she was the one who actually came before him I think it was something like that I, I think I, I read it somewhere or maybe someone told me in the comments sometime like 
he's act she's actually the senior one but she acts like that because she's respectful towards Ozamandis because she knows that Ozamandis was the best pharaoh even better than her so i think it was something like that as i said if i'm wrong correct me down and uh, yeah okay so what else all the scenes were beautiful i feel you know like i feel all the different characters had their own thing you know had their own problems uh the round table uh, nights i'm talking about um for example agravain uh, we saw agravain you know he was he was loyal to uh, king arthur up until the end even if it meant actually like you know like uh not manipulating but actually going along the king's whims which was obviously going to uh be bad in the long run he he wanted to make that ideal world alongside his king so like you know that was his thing um uh, gawain gawain you know like he he wanted to follow and uh, just like you know like his, his loyalty his loyalty was was with arthur as well even though he also knew that the thing that arthur was doing was not good and not correct but he wanted to help king uh, arthur make that world that he that she envisioned <clears throat> and you know, that was him lancelot you know with his own like not problem but his own thing of like you know he he betrayed arthur once and again this time as well you can say that he again betrayed her here but here it was for the good before that it was not for the good it was because of the whole thing with Guinevere uh, and you know like all that stuff so like that's what he says like um, Gawain says that you, you betrayed your king before for a woman and now you're betraying her again but you know but this time it was for the better and Lancelot you know was able to make proper amends for it <clears throat> uh, Tristan Tristan as well. I I have to say I actually read Tristan's uh, lore. I have to say one or two times, and I again forgot it. Like it, it has something to do with a girl, as far as I can remember. Um, I don't remember at all what 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 is his lore. But his lore is an interesting lore. I'll I'll check it out maybe after after I end this. I'll probably go and check it out again. Um, it was something related to a woman. As far as I know, as far as I remember, I can't remember at all. But anyways, you know, like, <clears throat> so yeah, like Tristan as well. In the end, he says that I was able to see something good. And we see uh, Hassan of the Cursed Arm and Hassan of Serenity, them fighting uh, against uh, Tristan as well. Serenity giving her life and Hassan taking that um, uh, Cursed Arm taking that opportuni opportunity to you know like to unleash the Shaitan and like that was you know how he got Tristan how he defeated Tristan who else was here uh, Gawain yeah Lancelot uh, Mordred yeah Mordred Mordred with her own problems her like you know this time he she, he uh, not he sorry uh, this time she wanted to be accepted by uh, arthur in the end what did she say just a sec okay this time i will die as my father's knight yeah like so like as far as i could understand everything that is happening here is after all all of the things that has already transpired like you know like everything that has happened Mordred had already once before uh, betrayed Arthur uh, so did Lancelot and you know like everything has already happened and this is all of these things are actually happening after that isn't it like that that would make a lot more sense here because as we see that you know like uh, Lancelot or uh, not Lancelot sorry uh, <sighs> Bedivere, Bedivere wasn't able to throw away the uh, sword and the, the time when he actually does that is almost at the end of Arthurian legend. You know, at the end of Arth uh, Arth King Arthur's legend, he throws away the sword uh, into the lake and King Arthur goes to Avalon. 
So that's where everything ends. So this is the continuation of this. So he wasn't able to throw away the uh, sword. You know, the sword kind of got integrated into his hand. He became this, like, you know, kind of like a, a, a human with a, like, you know, a, a, a divine, like, you know, th thing in his hand, the Excalibur. And he started to look for King Arthur, while Arthur, you know, uh, became this type of a divine spirit, divine, like, you know, like, heroic spirit, which uh, became like a monster, mo monstrosity. And, uh, you know, like, she, she had his own, her own ideals of saving everyone, his own, her own twisted ideals of saving everyone by just, like, you know, uh, keeping them as records in the Rongomaniad. And that was her way of actually, like, you know, saving everyone. So that means that all the things that has happened in the Arthurian legend has already been happened. And, it's ha and this is happening after that. So that means Mordred had already betrayed Arthur once. So did Lancelot, you know, like, and uh, I'm guessing Arthur also impaled Mordred using Rongomaniad in the, in the final battle. Uh, same with Lancelot, I also, I guess, he also defeated, she also defeated Lancelot. Uh, and all this stuff, the Battle of Camelan, like all of this has already transpired. That's why I think that's why uh, Mordred here says that this time I will die as my father's knight. Because, you know, he, she, she already betrayed him once, but this time she actually wants to follow uh, King Arthur. That it would make a lot more sense like that because, you know, like we also see her saying that um, I will follow, uh, like, you know, father's words this time. Like in one of the previous scenes as well, she said something like that. Like, I'll, I'll, I will follow uh, father's uh, words properly uh, this time or something like that, she says. So, yeah, so I understand now. And that's why, you know, like a few of the characters, their personalities are very different from how I expected to be. Like, I, I, I expected, uh, like, I, I, I never realized this actually while playing the game. I have to say, now that I'm watching the movie, I'm actually realizing that this is happening after all the uh, Arthurian legend, after everything happens. This is actually happening then. Like, I never realized it while I was playing the game. I don't know why. But, yeah. So, wow. Okay. And obviously the final scene of uh, Marsh and King Arthur. King, uh, you know, like uh, Fujimaru using uh, his final command spell on Bedivere. Bedivere and, you know, coming in front of Arthur, confronting her and returning the Excalibur to the king. Yeah. And in the end, we also see Agravain for a little bit as well. Him also dying. Unsuccessful. And lamenting the fact that he wasn't able to do anything. While Arthur says that you've done enough. It's time for you to rest. Wow, this is amazing. I love the final scene. The final scene is probably the best part of, of this whole movie. It was done very well, and I am glad that it was done in that manner. It was an epic scene, my god, you know, like, seeing, um, what can I say, like, Bedivere was impaled, but still he goes in front of Arthur, you know, kneels down, his hand changes to, like, you know, the Excalibur, and he, and he uh, presents it in front of Arthur, and Arthur takes it from him, and... He says that, yeah, you've done well following my orders and returning this back to me, my last and my most loyal knight. So yeah. Wow, the loyalty, like, imagine. Oof. Yeah, that was it. Oh my god. And is there anything else that I missed? Mm, no, I think that was it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh... Yeah, that was it. That was this uh, movie. 
so yeah let me know how you guys liked it um i have to say as i said again and again that um i'm content i'm really content with especially this movie um i have like you know like I'll, I'll have to rank rate this a lot higher than the first one because obviously a lot of things changed here uh the animation style improved by a lot and uh, the you know the fighting scenes and everything was amazing the the final scene was uh, animated perfectly with all the sound effects and you know the music and stuff everything everything was just like done in a very well way and it was it was one of the most beautiful scenes and yeah so obviously this this ranks a lot higher than the first uh part now here's one thing as i said like you know uh, i don't remember a lot of things that actually happened here there were the, the main parts i remembered obviously the whole uh sections of like you know bedivere being a human all that stuff i remembered but those were the main ones like obviously i would remember that but the little details i i, I probably forgotten so i cannot say if they actually skipped something from this part as well just like how they did in the first part i'm not sure if they skipped something from this part if they have actually skipped something uh, i probably won't even be able to realize because as i said i i don't remember a lot of things when i played the game so if they actually skip something you can let me know in the comment section uh like one thing that's very apparent is hassan of 100 uh, personas is not here at all and as if I remember correctly, she was present in Camelot, wasn't she? So they basically just erased a complete servant from this adaptation. Like, I don't know why they did that. Hmm, maybe not enough time. Is, is that why? I don't know. But yeah, like, but overall, it was, it was a solid adaptation. I loved it. And it was, it was impactful. It was nice. The, the animations were a lot better than part one and it, it it was good uh like i like you know to be honest i have to say like they could have done a better job uh but i'm glad like you know i'm content with this it's, it's not that bad it's it's not as good at, as it like you know it could have been but it's not that bad like i'm saying that it's not that good as it could have been because if you guys know this is a movie this is supposed to be a movie two-part movie movie has a lot more budget than animes and that's why like you know like i feel like babylonia the, the thing that babylonia was able to do the anime adaptation you know if like they could have easily done something like that in this uh, movie as well and it would have been amazing because i love babylonia the animations the sound effects of babylonia was fantastic it was it was top notch it was, it was done so amazingly so like you know getting babylonia and then getting this camelot obviously i would compare them to the both of them and like you know babylonia probably uh like you know put the hurdle or, or the bars a bit high and now to like you know to overcome that i'll obviously like you know compare all the adaptations that will come even in the future of fate fate grand order all the adaptations that will come in the future I'll obviously uh like you know babylonia will be thing that uh, will be the the thing that i'll be comparing everything to which i think would probably be can probably be surpassed because solomon is coming out clover works is doing solomon as far as i remember and it's a movie so i feel like solomon can probably surpass babylonia in in terms of animations and like you know art style and all that you know like they can probably surpass babylonia i have high expectations of solomon but yeah this is good you know camelot was good and it was it was a solid adaptation i have no problem with it it was beautiful and especially the last scene my god that was uh, I, I would probably never forget that the, the final scenes of bedivere and arthur yeah that anyway so that's it guys so thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to um uh, fate grand order camelot uh, in, in movie number two so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah i put out uh, fgo videos like this and uh, one or two times a week you know like gameplay videos other reactions and stuff fate related i do, do that once or twice a week so if you're interested in them be sure to subscribe and i'll also be linking down my fgo playlist if you want to see my other fgo videos click on that and it'll take you to that so yeah that's it so thank you guys for watching and um yeah I'll, let me know how you guys like this you know i'm, I'm quite interested in like you know 
listening to how pe- other people liked it because as far as i remember uh, a lot of people did not like the first adaptation and i don't blame them you know i don't blame them the first adaptation was a little bit weaker but i i i i, I can probably say that a lot of people will probably like this one like uh, this had a lot more improvements and i have to say like this is a lot better than the first one even if it was not the best but it was good so let me know how you guys like i i'm really curious to uh, see how people actually whether people like this or not so yeah so anyways so i'll see you guys in the next video until then goodbye and have a nice day